I don't think you need to make a lot of designs to start a made to order business. You just need to make a few designs that show people what you're capable of, especially if you're going to do made to order where people are buying your designs and you're making it as you're placing the orders. Hi Kdivers, it's Priscilla here. Welcome back to Kim Dave, the channel where we share all things fashion design and the reality of running a fashion business in 2024. This is going to be a Q&A where I answer some of your questions and these are mostly in the fashion business realm. So if you'd like to find out the answers to these questions, make sure to keep on watching. Leave any further questions you have in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and so more people see it on the platform and let's get straight into this before we get into the tutorial let's just do a bit of um, outfit details I'm wearing a black bodycon maxi dress a gold necklace with matching earring and the hairband is actually from my new collection LOSS 27 which actually opens for pre-order today I'm going to leave a link down below we decided to make this collection made to order so it's a lot more special and exclusive for anyone who places an order online so this is one of the accessories and the hairband is made from a jacquard fabric and you can wear it forward or backwards however you like i just thought it styled really really well with some of the looks in the collection and it's something that if you wanted to support the collection and you do want to buy clothing you could reach for this sells for 19 pounds and 99 pence i'm going to link the collection and this hairband down below for anyone who wants to check it out so I'm just going to pull you guys a bit closer so we're up and pressing now because this is a Q&A and the first question is from Amor Light F and this is a question that I can relate to personally and the question goes do you think it's possible for a 31 year old to learn fashion and still boom in the field? Yes, I think it's absolutely possible. I don't think there's like an expiry date on when you should pursue your aspirations, your goals and your passion because something that I'm coming to realize as I get older is you only get one life. Even if you start a bit later, that's okay. There are a lot of well-known people in ju not just fashion, in art, in music who started out a little bit later than is considered, you know, normal and they still did very well. The only thing that would happen is you have, you sort of have that pressure on yourself mentally that, oh, I'm a bit older and I need to put that into consideration when I am working, but it does not limit you honestly i think your mind is where you would need to do the work the moment you can step out of that limiting factor of oh i'm a little bit older and i think 31 is not even old if i'm being honest maybe it's because i live in the west i live in london now but i genuinely i genuinely think that the moment you can get out of that mental state of oh i think i'm too old it's too late for me honestly the sky is your launching pad because nobody else would be able to put a lid or a cap on what you're able to achieve except you okay the second question is from fatumata underscore g and the question goes do you have to go to university to become a good fashion designer no yes i said it no i don't think you need to go to a fashion school to become a good fashion designer there's an array of established fashion brands that I can think of off the top of my head that they didn't go to fashion school, but their brands and their businesses are doing really well. Now you have to think about the end goal when you ask this question. Do you want to start your own brand or do you want to work for someone else? Also, where are you going to be working? Because if you are someone like in London or like in, you know, a developed country where they still take degrees and accreditations into consideration if you're applying for a job yes it makes sense to get a degree but it's not compulsory i genuinely think that fashion is one of those industries that any skill-based industry is your experience that sets you apart from your counterpart so if you can go and do an apprenticeship or internship other on that like you know a very good designer that would actually teach you how to create garments whether it's pattern cutting or draping or you know choosing the right fabrics for different styles i honestly think that kind of experience you cannot gain in fashion school like dealing with real designs fabrics customers things like that you don't learn in fashion school fashion school gives you a good foundation or uni gives you a good foundation but 
the real skills that you would need to survive as a fashion business owner you learn outside of fashion school i'm just speaking from experience also think about your end goal if you do want to start a fashion business i say going to university does not guarantee that your business will succeed you need to take courses independently learn things that you yourself you don't know whether it is accounting marketing writing a business plan understanding cash flow strategies to you know put your brand in the best way possible to reach the right customer all of that you learn on your own and let me just tell you for free now like if, you'll be very lucky if you go to a uni and they cover everything you'll be very lucky but most time that's not the case the third question is from miss.o and <laughs> she says can you start a beginner's tutorial online for us to follow what made you start sewing? So I'm guessing this is a two part question. I do have a playlist on my channel and I get people ask me about tutorials I have already made in the past. I have divided my videos into playlists. There is a playlist dedicated to beginner projects, beginner tutorials. There's another playlist for intermediate and another playlist for like more advanced videos. So please go on the beginner playlist if you are looking for beginner tutorials. I try to make beginner tutorials now and again because I understand not everyone is like experienced and has skills but still want to be able to create their own clothing. So if there's a particular project you want me to like do a tutorial for, please leave a comment down below. And if I've not done it, I will try my best to make that happen. The second part of the question was what made me start sewing? Um, I think honestly, I, because I, I've always been into fashion in terms of like styling looks, not necessarily creating the garments themselves. I think that was like my first introduction into like the fashion world. My mom was definitely like a huge inspo because she has always been very stylish in a very elegant and modest way. So I grew up seeing that. Now, when I got into uni in, in Nigeria, I went to University of Benin and I studied microbiology. I always liked to look good. Like everybody knew me in my department as a girl that likes to dress up for no reason. I'll have makeup, I'll wear heels, I'll go to class looking really, really nice. I've always been like that. The curiosity to learn, however, grew when I I then went to do like a three month short program at Matt Wayne in Lagos. This was in, I think it was in Surrey Leary. I did that program and it really opened my eyes to how complex and broad the fashion world is. So that I say grew my hunger to want to learn how to sew, pattern draft and all that good stuff. But in terms of like what made me want to sew initially, I will say it's a mixture of enjoying styling looks and just growing up watching my mom look so stylish, so fabulous every time. Next question on my list is from Zubi.coco and she asked, what do you do when it seems like your business strategy isn't going as planned? This is very normal and something that you should actually anticipate if you have a business because things change the way consumers shop change trends come and go um the world just happens and life just be going like that so i think anticipating something like this is normal so what i have done in the past and what i found worked for me is if for example i i plan the strategy i and, and i've put it in motion and i'm seeing that it's not working i check to see what's elements maybe for example it might be like a marketing strategy that i've planned for like newsletters and social media i go and check what's not working is it the time i'm posting is it the format i'm posting is it because i'm posting pictures instead of videos or videos instead of pictures is it the length of the content is it maybe reducing the amount of text i'm adding in my newsletters you know there are all these like checkpoints that i go through to see what can I tweak? What can I change to ensure that a strategy works? Because a lot of times you might not get it straight off the bat and that's okay. What now matters is you going back and checking um, your strategy, checking the different metrics, seeing out of all of the things that I had posted, which one worked and why did it work? And how can I take elements from that and implement that in coming like content that I'm planning for social media. Now, this is the case of marketing strategy. My YouTube channel is a very good example of that. When I started posting videos, not a lot of people were doing sewing content and it was like a blue ocean. But fast forward, what now, eight years, there are a lot more sewing channels. So the competition is 
it, they are just there's just a lot more channels who are even doing the tutorials better than me so it's not a case of okay do i need to change my content strategy do i need to you know focus on maybe a particular style of fashion or do i need to switch to something more lifestyle but it's still like rooted in fashion thinking about like the way i'm going to evolve my content so it grows with me is something that i need to do if i want my channel to survive i hope that makes sense so it's normal it happens it just comes with the territory but it does not mean that your business will fail it does not mean that you are doomed or anything it just means okay maybe it's time i need to like analyze and look at things before i continue to execute this strategy my final question is from avels underscore designer and the question reads hey kim hey kim dave how do you how do i start a made to order business and what are the things i need to start uh, if you are based in the UK like I am, um, I know for a fact you need to register your business, whether you want to be a sole trader or a limited company, just start thinking about that. You might also need to consider um, where you want to sell your pieces. Are you going to be online? So you just, you know, buy that domain name and have it for yourself. And to come to the more um, research, market research side of things, knowing the customer that you are going to sell to is really important because that would affect a lot of things a lot of things it would affect the kind of fabrics you work with it would affect the kind of branding you do for your business it would affect the packaging you use for your product so have an idea of who your target audience is what their habits their interests their their lifestyle is like because that's going to help you to package your product in a way that it reaches the right customer it's also important to, you know, think about tools. Do you need to buy a machine? Do you need to buy an overlocker, scissors, fabric, just, you know, practical things that you actually need to start. But I don't think you need to make a lot of designs to start a made to order business. You just need to make a few designs that show people what you're capable of, especially if you're going to do made to order where people are buying your designs and you're making it as you're placing the orders. So make that photograph them really, really well, whether it's posting it on Instagram or, or on Facebook or whatever social media platform you decide to have as your primary like point of communication with your customers post it on there but just ensure that if the picture quality is really good the video quality is really good and to ensure that you have a higher chance of standing out from your peers think of what makes your your business your brand the way you work unique from everybody else what makes you stand out is it the fact that you are really good with lace or you're really good with silk or you're really amazing with this with a corset style like what's that unique flavor that makes your business stand out from everyone else's that's going to be your unique selling point and your usp and that's just going to make you stand out from the crowd especially if you're going to be selling online this has been a very um chill but insightful conversation i hope you guys have enjoyed this video as i mentioned earlier i'm going to be linking my headband down below and like my necklace if i see um if, if they're still available on the website i'll link all relevant links down below if you enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up leave any further questions you have in the comment section down below and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye Thank you.